Okay, well I'm going to show you how to calculate a final valuation for a company estimating their stock price and I'm going to use Walmart as my example. So I'm going to estimate a price for Walmart using a discounted cash flow model. So what I've got here is on the left hand side I've got a number of assumptions. I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, in my prior videos, which are also on this YouTube site, I estimated cash flow for one year, free cash flow for one year. So that's what we want to estimate. And my estimate estimation for free cash flow for next year, and we're going to assume that we're at the end of 2020 for this video's purpose. But my estimate for free cash flow is $18.64 billion on revenue projections of $587 billion for next year. Now, there's a number of ways you could project out free cash flow going forward. For a fast-growing firm, you'd probably want to do a forecast every single year because typically what happens for a fast-growing firm is that their ratio of free cash flow to revenue tends to grow over time as they're able to hold the line on costs. Walmart, of course, is an established company. We're going to assume for the sake of our purposes that this ratio between free cash flow and revenue is going to stay constant. And so what I've got here is I've calculated that ratio here. You can just see it's F6 divided by F5. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to project out revenue and then of course project out free cash flow. So for revenue I've got a little bit of a you know a few assumptions here. I'm assuming the first year it's going to grow one per five percent. Then between years two and five it's going to grow two percent and then its terminal growth rate from now until the end of time or from that point forward till the end of time will be one percent. So geez, these are just basic assumptions that I'll make but of course you would want to do more work behind the scenes to try to make sure you get that right. So for next year's revenue it's just going to be uh, one plus uh, next year's revenue growth and then let's say I want to grow this number here one plus revenue growth at 2% and I'm going to lock that down here. I'm going to lock down this number. So hit a 4 and I'm going to grow it at 2% and by locking it down I'm able to drag this across and it will always grow it at 2%. And then the terminal period, you know, that'll I'll use the terminal growth rate. So we're going to come up with a final valuation for this company an exit valuation if you will or a terminal terminal valuation. And to do that I'm going to use this number and I'm going to multiply it by one plus my perpetual or my terminal growth rate and I'm kind of assuming that'll be the growth rate from that point forward to the end of time. Okay so these are my revenue projections for each year and what I want to do is calculate free cash flow as I mentioned before I'm just going to calculate this ratio I've actually calculated that ratio here 3.17 percent so what I'm going to do is use that number and I'm going to anchor that so I'm going to hit F4 to anchor that and I'm going to multiply that ratio that 3.17 percent times next year's revenue and so it gives me 19,572 and I'm going to carry that forward uh, to this point actually I'll do it all the way across okay and so these are my estimates for free cash flow for each of these years and what I want to do is come up with um, also an exit value so what's going to happen as at the at the end of 2025 you know I could continue to forecast free cash flow forever uh, that's kind of hard to do you know it doesn't really make sense at some point you just call it call it a day you cut it off and you come up with a terminal value it could also be that I want to sell this business at the end of 2025 and so I come up with a um, final exit value and so what you do there is you use the Gordon growth model The Gordon growth model says that at the end of 2025 the business at that point in time was going to be worth in next year's free cash flow so the one that happens in actually this would be 2026 divided by the weighted average cost of capital and I've got that over here I've got my assumption I'm using a really low weighted average cost of capital of four and a half percent for Walmart I'll explain that in a little bit and then I want to take that minus the terminal growth rate so it's R minus G or the weighted average cost of capital minus the terminal growth rate I put parentheses around that and that tells me that at the end of 2025 actually this business is going to be worth five hundred ninety nine a uh, thousand dollars or you know billion dollars okay so the discount factor then is what I'm going to discount it by here I'm just going to go one divided by one plus the weighted average cost of capital I'm going to lock that uh, down so hit F4 and I'm going to raise it to the first power it doesn't really make sense to raise anything to the first power it's kind of not necessary but this allows me if I raise it to this you'll see what will happen 
as I now drag this across, you'll see that here, and let me get rid of these numbers. I've already calculated these, but let me get rid of that. So you can see here I've raised it to the G1 power. I've raised it to the second power. Here I've raised it to the third power. So this is a nice little trick you can do in Excel. And so these are my discount rates uh, for one year forward, two years forward, three, four, five. I'm always using the weighted average cost of capital of 4.5% in this case. Okay, so the present value of my cash flows are simply going to be the actual cash flows that I'm going to forecast times the present times the discount factor. And so let me get rid of the uh, decimal there, get this in the right format, and then just kind of drag this across. Now the reality is I can also, remember at the end of 2025, I'm going to estimate the Walmart at that point is going to be worth $599 billion. I'm going to effectively sell the business at $599. So let me just go ahead and uh, calculate the present value of that because that's what it's going to be worth five years from today, assuming we're sitting here at the end of 2020. Okay, so I'm going to take this number here and I'm going to multiply this by uh, this discount factor. So I still use the 2025 discount factor because again this is this is what it's going to be worth at the end of 2025 when this when this cash flow at the same time that this cash flow happens. So I'm going to use that number right there. Now so what I do here is I sum up the present values here. Sum those up. That's the horizon. So this is the sum of my horizon cash flows. And then the uh, terminal value I'm just just to redo this, this is my terminal value, and then this is going to be the present value of that terminal value. Okay, So I'm just linking to that number right there. And let me make this a little wider because for some reason it went away. Uh, we want to get rid of those decimals. Oh, let's just do this real quick. Get rid of that decimal. And then I think we got to do the same thing here. Let's get rid of any decimals. Okay, So the enterprise value Okay, this is the value of the total business. And so I'm going to just take the sum of the present value of the horizon cash flow, and I'm going to add in the present value of the terminal value of the terminal. So just those two numbers together. That's the enterprise value of the business. Um, that's not the value of the equity. And the reason it's not, one of the, the main reason it's not is because I've still got debt on my balance sheet. So this is the this is the present value of all the free cash flow, but some of that free cash flow will be, will be necessary to pay off the debt holders, the bond holders, the people who have lent the, the company money. So I need to come up with that number. So there's this line you'll often see called net non-operating obligations. That's really a fancy word for kind of the net debt of the company. So I can get that. I've got the income statement and the balance sheet over here. Actually, let's just go to the balance sheet. So what I can hit is equal. And let's just figure out the net debt number. All that's going to be is the total debt minus the cash. So so let's start here. This is the long-term debt uh, number here. So I'm going to add in that number. And then I'm going to look, uh, kind of keep scrolling up until I see, you know, long-term debt due within one year. I'm going to add that number. And is there short-term borrowings? Yep. And then what I'm going to do is subtract out cash. And I'm using last year's balance sheet for all of this, okay, or you know, the, the most recent balance sheet. What I don't what I'm not using is the projected numbers. I'm using the actual debt that exists right now. So this is the net debt. So another way to think about this is if I was to uh, liquidate this firm today, I would get to keep the cash, okay, because I'm the equity holder, but I'd have to pay off the bondholders. So it's the debt minus the cash. That's the net debt. I'm going to have to subtract that from the enterprise value. The other thing you need to do when you're looking at particularly a publicly traded firm is there's this thing called non-controlling interest. So what that is is Walmart, you know, they own, uh, you know, a certain percentage of, of other businesses out there. So they might own another company or another corporation. And uh, they might own, let's say they own 60% of it. So they don't own about 40% of it. So what happens is when you consolidate the balance sheet onto yours, they consolidate all of it as if you own it. And then at the last minute, they strip out what you don't own, and that's called the non-controlling interest. So I don't have access to that, and so I need to strip that out. And so where you find that, actually, is you look on the balance sheet, and that will be down in the equity section. Now, not every firm will have this, but you see that Walmart does have that there. Okay, So I need to account for that. So what I'm going to do here is hit equal and you know, actually what I did is I already linked it over here, so I can just link it. 
So it's at 6.6 .6 billion. Just to verify that, you can see it's 6.6 .6 billion. So that's the number. So I've linked it. I've linked to it here. So here I'll just link to it over here, just to keep it easy. So I'll just link on that number. And now I can come up with the total equity value of the firm. So I take the enterprise value and I subtract out the net non-operating obligations or the net debt, and I also subtract out the non-controlling interest. And that gives me an estimated equity value of $534 billion. Now, I happen to know, I, Walmart has 2.797 shares outstanding, billion shares outstanding. You can get that number, say, from Yahoo Finance, or you can download their financials in the SEC Edgar database and find that number in there. So I'm going to use that number here, 2797. And so now I can come up with an intrinsic value as stock price for the company. It's just going to be the total equity value divided by the shares outstanding. And what I'm saying is that based on my assumptions here, based on this cash flow growth and that weighted average cost of capital and that terminal growth rate, then I'm estimating that, that Walmart should trade at $191 per share. So what you can do is go to the actual uh, let's go over here. Let's go to the actual stock price. And, you know, I'm speaking to you here in February of 2022. So, you know, Walmart cycled through some various uh, valuations over the last year. You know, I think it hit a high up here of, say, 152, but it's at 139 right now. So based on my model, so based on my model, I'm estimating that Walmart should be trading for a lot higher in the marketplace than it is in that than it is today. It's trading at 139. I'm valuing it at 190, 191. So what I'm saying is Walmart looks cheap. It looks inexpensive. Um, now the problem is the market could be right, and I could just be wrong. I may be overestimating the cash flow here. I definitely could be overestimating the weighted average cost of capital. I'm using a very low number. A lot of companies are going to have a higher weighted average cost of capital than Walmart. The reason mine is so low is I, you know, they have a beta, a equity beta of around 0.5 and they are a double A rated company. So they can borrow very inexpensively right now. So there's a lot of things that mean that Walmart's weighted average cost of capital should be low, but I can test that assumption. So let's do this. Let's do a sort of a what if analysis. You know, this is just a point forecast, but let's start tweaking some of these assumptions. And I, I can tweak these here. Let's, let's just say, for example, I put in 5% here. Well, you're going to watch this. Everything's going to go lower. Okay. Oh, I didn't, I messed that up. So I just put in 5% and I hit enter. And, there, and now it goes down to 165. So you can see that there's some sensitivity to the weighted average cost of capital. Let's put it back at 4.5% for now. This is the advantage, by the way, of putting these assumptions on the outside of your model. Because now I can just tweak these numbers here and, and everything over here will change. But let's do this. Let's put in uh, the weighted average cost of capital over here on this matrix. And then over here, let's put uh, down different assumptions for the terminal. Actually, let's move it over here. The uh, terminal, terminal growth rate. Okay, so weighted average cost of capital. Let's start at four and a half. I don't, I don't, now let's maybe go a little lower. Let's go 425 and let's say that the next, let's try it at 450, which we've already done. Let's just grow it at 25 basis points and then let's grow it all the way up to, I don't know, let's go up to here, six and a quarter. Let's assume that it goes, and that's still a pretty low weighted average cost of capital uh, for a lot of firms. They'd love to have something that low. So you could potentially go even higher than that. For their terminal growth rate, I don't know. Let's start at zero, and then let's go fifty. Let's go up by fifty basis points, and uh, you know, I mean, it, their terminal growth rate could be much higher too. But let's go up to say three percent. And again, a growth firm like a Tesla or somebody, they're going to have a much higher terminal growth rate than this. Whereas you know, Walmart is kind of an established firm and uh, it doesn't grow that quickly every year. So I think these are reasonable assumptions. So what you want to do now is you want to link in here to the thing that you want to change. So I'm going to hit equals and I'm going to try altering WAC and terminal growth rate to get different prices. So I'm just going to link to that price there. Okay. And then what I do is I highlight all of this. All right. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to data here at the top and hit what if analysis okay so then it says what do I want to do well this is a data table so let's choose data table and it says okay what's the row input cell so 
this is the stuff I'm changing the weighted average cost of capital so what I want to do is just click on my whack assumption that gave me this price here so I'm choosing that that's what I'm altering I'm altering my whack assumption and um, on the column side I'm going to I'm going to alter my terminal growth assumption so that was this number here so those are the things I'm going to alter and I'm gonna hit OK and I've already formatted this actually I didn't format this row down here so let's format this one uh, let's do that let's do this okay and let's get rid of this column okay so these oh, I'll leave it there so anyways you can look in here forget forget this column here but this is um, well let's go ahead because it says I already did it with that in mind and let me just go ahead and format this as well and then we'll be done okay so dollar sign boom okay so now you see a bunch of different numbers here so now I don't just have 191 I've got a distribution now we know today's stock price is around 139 so that's kind of gets me here so maybe the market's telling me that the weighted average cost of capital for Walmart should be more closer to five and a quarter and their terminal growth rate is only 50 basis points I mean that number comes up in other spots here you know it could be you know kind of right it right in this range here if with a 1% terminal growth rate and a higher whack it also gets you to around that 139 number so what you can do is look at this and say well what has to happen for us to justify that 139 stock price you know this is what I'm forecasting I'm forecasting four and a half percent and I'm forecasting one percent so this is the number here that I have uh, forecasted let me just put that in yellow that those are the assumptions I used but had I tweaked those assumptions you see I get massively different numbers here so that's a very useful exercise as well uh, to you know come come up with a you know this is a good a good case scenario is a low whack and a high growth rate that's that's like the optimal scenario uh, you know the pessimistic scenario could be something like a really high whack and a very low growth rate and and so uh, you know you can test your assumptions that way so anyways that is how you do a DCF analysis once you project out the cash flows and I hope this is very helpful for you if you like this video give it a thumbs up feel free to subscribe to my channel as well because I make a lot of videos on this channel with the goal of making finance fun for students. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.